And once again, a very warm welcome to our webinar today on international uh, knowledge platforms. Once again, my name is Pascal Lopez and I'm the moderator of this webinar for today. Let me briefly present what's on the agenda today. Um, there will be an introduction to knowledge platforms, a general introduction. This will be done by Nina, as I just uh, have um, mentioned her. We will then have a presentation of a web-based um, knowledge platform, which is called the Panorama Platform. And um, hello, Luisa and Helga for being with us today. We're very so happy that you could arrange it to make it happen to be here at this live event. We will then have um, also hints for your own research with regard to the web platforms. Um, this will also be done by Nina, and then we will have another um, live presentation of another platform which is called the WebAdapt platform and this is done by Sukaina from the project WeAdapt. Um, thanks also very much for, for being with, here, with us here. Um, this sixth part will be further examples and next steps um, and the seventh part will be question and answers and this will take all in all about one hour 15 minutes. So we will then finish at least here in our uh, local time at uh, 9.45. Okay, just um, to, to warm up, to have an um, interactive start, uh, Nina will now uh, start uh, a brief survey in the chat, so you can also get familiar with this uh, chat function. Uh, you can click on your, yeah, uh, whatever is um, adapted for you, how familiar are with knowledge platforms, not at all, a little familiar, or I use them, or even I share content on them. This should give us an idea of uh, who is here today and um, how big is your experience with knowledge platforms. And after um, choosing the, the button, you have to send it. I think in your version, it's also the German term, absenden, so this is sent, so we can get uh, the results very shortly after. You know, I don't know if you can see all really the results of this. Um, yes, I can I, see that uh, quite a few submitted already, but you can take your time. So the survey stays in the chat um, and you can submit your answers anytime, actually. Is there more people coming in? Very nice. Um, overview of the Icky Small Grants program. We will do this very briefly since um, I'm sure you're all more or less aware of um, who we are, who are, where are you participating in, but nevertheless, um, some key um, figures about the Icky Small Grants program. It's um, commissioned or let's say funded by our German Federal Ministry of the for the Environment, the BMUV as it's called now, and the ICI Small Grants is part of the large ICI International, uh, International Climate Initiative family, which now have, has the classic ICI, then there are the medium grants and the small grants, and now you're participating here in the small grants program, which has a duration of uh, six years, started in um, July 2019, and is foreseen to run until 625. Um, there's a budget allocated to this program um, at the amount of 30 million euros um, to be divided into yeah, two support uh, components. Um, component one, this is international courts where you're participating, and then there's a second component. I will have one word on this on the next slide. The geographical scope is global, so every corner of the, the planet um, is uh, targeted with this program. Um, and the target groups are, as you're all representing here, small subnational, national or regional organizations. This is for the first component or for the second component, then it's rather on funding uh, institution. So larger institutions, um, not small organization. Um, as I said in the beginning, um, I'm based here in Berlin, as is uh, most of our team. Anyways, we have two um, yeah, 
headquarters. One is in, in Berlin and we have some staff in, in Bonn, the ancient uh, capital of, of Germany, which is also um, uh, a big office um, run by, by Giedet in or even bigger office in, in Bonn. Um, and then, of course, we have the support from our field structure in the various countries where GIZ um, programs and projects are being implemented. Main goal um, is to achieve more results for the Paris Agreement and the CBD, the Convention on Biological Diversity, always with the focus on building capacities um, of implementing um, partners in the various countries. That's what I just said about the two components. You're um, all in, in component one, as I was informed. So the participants of this uh, webinar, which we call the international courts, and then we have the comp second component, the, the funding institutions. Um, a very um, prominent goal and task of this program is capacity building, as I just said. Um, that means that we are supporting implementation organization of this component, um, but also of the partner comp uh, partner institution of the second component with um, capacity development, both on the international level and via several approaches. So as you participate in this webinar, and this is one form of uh, capacity building which we provide and then um, I guess most of you are either have been granted already um, funding for self-organized capacity development measures or you're being in the process that depends where your project proposal stands <clears throat> for the CD measures. And then we are also organizing um, with you individual support by technical or and legal or commercial advisors in Germany and experts of um, our offices on site in the field structure in the different countries. Yes, and this is a map um, of the current projects which are already being implemented. So I think in the seminar are people who are already implementing the Ikki Smogrant projects. And then we have um, also participants who are in the process with our technical staff and administrative staff um, to prepare the grant agreement. Um, so those um, grants will soon be, or in the next time be, be concluded and you see all these um, different colored countries where we are already or you're already implementing or soon implement your project. And as I said, um, yeah, the whole of the, the planet is covered with um, projects. And there are some more to come. Um, this was a slide, one of the slides before. So our goal in this project phase until 25 is to grant about 100 grants uh, for small scale project. And who's assisting you in, in preparing those grants and implementing this? So I would like to ask our Icky Morgan staff to turn on the cameras now so that you can see them as far as they are present here. Um, so we are we have two, let's say, parts of, of, of team members. This is technical project uh, project managers you see on the left side. Um, and we have the legal commercial project managers on, on the right side. And they assist you with um, everything you need to know to get the grant ready or to implement it. OK, so this was this short introduction from my side. I hand over now to Nina now. And she also takes control of the presentation. Nina, let's go. Yes, um, a warm welcome from my side too. Uh, my name is Nina Dietz, and I'm now going to introduce the topic of knowledge platforms to you, as some of you may wonder why did we come up with this uh, webinar on knowledge platforms, and how is this relevant for your projects? And I'd say you can summarize the benefit of knowledge platforms in two words, uh, one learning and two sharing. Um, learning because knowledge platforms related to climate change and biodiversity allow us to learn about other initiatives, their approaches, obstacles, success factors and achievements 
and they can help to get to other new resources and to learn from peers and experts. And to uh, sharing, because knowledge platforms also offer opportunities to share our own learnings and experiences uh, so that others can use them and our approaches can be upscaled. And since we all strive towards uh, the same goal, namely engaging in climate and biodiversity action, uh, these platforms allow us to have an even greater impact. And there's a lot of knowledge online uh, that is condensed on different platforms. Um, and yet it is usually difficult to find platforms that are tailored to one's uh, interests. So for your organizations, of course, it is particularly interesting to find platforms or websites that showcase uh, projects of other organizations tackling climate change or biodiversity loss uh, and thus allow for, for learning about further successful local climate and biodiversity solutions, um, initiatives and possibly also donors in the respective field. Um, your projects are all going to be featured on our Icky Small Grants website. A website and, and the ones uh, already running are already featured there. But in order to extend um, the reach and also recognition of your work, it would be beneficial if other platforms uh, with a broader reach and target group also presented your projects um, and the work of your organization. And as Iki Small Grants Office, uh, we would like to support you in this. Um, however, since our Iki Small Grants projects cover a big variety of topics, approaches and regions, and there's also a vast variety of platforms for different target groups and objectives, uh, this is best steered by you according to your individual needs and ambition. Um, but, but we hope that we can assist you in, in ensuring that your wealth of experience and your projects remain visible beyond the duration um, of uh, this ICI Small Grants program, and this is why we've launched this uh, webinar now. And um, yeah, to support you in this process, uh, our team would also like to share our experience with uh, several platforms. And as you are already aware, today we have invited guests from two platforms. Uh, those would be one, Panorama, and two, We Adapt, uh, that we think would be a good fit for your projects. What we don't know is whether you've heard of these two platforms before having received our webinar invitation or if you have already used them. Um, yeah, and since we're curious and, and just to get a better impression, we would like to ask you now to answer uh, the questions I am now going to post in the chat. I hope you can all see them in a second. So yeah, the first one would be, have you heard of the Panorama platform before? You can either answer the questions on your screen or in the chat. Um, and the second one would be, have you heard of the We Adapt platform before? So maybe just take a, a minute to respond. I hope all of you can see the, the questions. Yeah, and I can see that some of you are already submitting answers. And it seems that most of you haven't heard of those platforms before, or at least those ones that have submitted responses. So uh, yeah, all the better that um, Panorama and We Adapt are presenting themselves today. Uh, so once again, thanks Luisa, Helga and uh, Sukaina for being with us today. Yeah, so when we did some research over the past weeks on knowledge platforms, uh, we found dozens, hundreds of examples all being different. And this slide here uh, is intended to give an impression of what such knowledge platforms on climate change and biodiversity conservation could look like. And you can see snippets of different platforms as examples here. Um, some platforms are purely a source of information or inspiration, offering orientation in the thicket of numerous approaches in the fight against uh, global climate change. 
uh, as the fact book up here and um, others provide you with the possibility to filter project initiatives by, by topic, approaches and regions, um, or they present a world map to see what other projects exist in your country. And many also offer webinars or engaging toolkits to deepen your expertise. So in general, all aim to uh, accelerate knowledge exchange, uh, strengthen collaboration, support information on research and policy, build networks um, and capacities. Yeah, and for today, we would like um, to focus on platforms that allow you to participate, meaning platforms that are open to all and of course free of charge. And we will hear more about this in a moment. Um, but here I should probably mention uh, that the platforms, the online platforms and sources we present to you during our webinar today um, or beyond are not competing with each other. Um, on, on the contrary, um, as they all share the same objective, uh, namely to stabilize the climate and biodiversity on our planet and to be prepared uh, in the light of climate changes already taking place, the platforms complement one another. So in a nutshell, um, the idea behind this webinar is to share how to increase your visibility and your discoverability by participating in suitable platforms, uh, to learn with and from others by using what's already out there, and to learn about approaches that work, learn about further allies uh, in the climate effort and uh, consolidate information. And uh, with this, I will pass on to Pascal again. Yes, thank you, Nina, for this um, very helpful orientation and first information on, on knowledge platforms. Thank you. So we would now come to the other part where we have a presentation about the um, the other platform. You have to sh close your presentation, Nina. It's a panorama platform. And as I introduced them in the beginning, we have uh, Louise and Helga joining. Um, Louise is an advisor on ecosystem-based adaptation in also a BMUV ICI funded uh, project which is implemented by GIZ. It's about uh, mainstreaming ecosystem-based adaptation or EBA and she has been working with EBA for more than five years with a focus on capacity development, communication, gender and also monitoring and evaluation for, for EBA and also for integrated water resource management, so an expert in this field. Um, and since the beginning um, of 2019, Luis has been also managing um, the EBA community on the Panorama platform, which currently contains around 170 examples of uh, nature-based solution for adaptation. So we are very curious on hearing from you. And then we also have Helga, who is also a project manager at GIZ in the Climate Change, Rural Development and Infrastructure Division. And in the Panorama partnership, she has a role of a partnership coordinator. So she shares this role with a colleague at IUCN. Helga and Luisa, thanks for being here and the floor is yours. Thank you, Pascal. Thank you, everybody. I will start today and uh, Luisa coming after. <laughs> so um... I love to be here. I'm very, very happy that we can present the Panorama platform uh, to you. Um, and uh, Panorama is also a BMU uh, V funded project in the moment. Um, and uh, to start with, I would like to share with you a video uh, and then tell some more words to it and then hand over to Luise to show uh, the perspective of a community, of a thematic community. So here the video comes. Okay, enjoy. What if we could learn from each other's success rather than reinventing the wheel again and again? I find it very uh, exciting that there's a trend of trying to find solutions and trying to sort of understand how these solutions have happened and how they can be 
replicable. Panorama is a strong and growing partnership for learning and exchanging knowledge across geographic, sectoral and thematic boundaries. Practitioners working in nature conservation and development share successful approaches, projects and methods, or solutions. By breaking a solution down into its key components, or building blocks, Panorama contributors make their lessons learned accessible to others. Building blocks can be adapted, recombined and reapplied by someone else. A solution seeker with a specific challenge, building on what's worked before. Solutions are used as real-life examples in trainings, and workshops and webinars bring people together to discuss, network and learn. An online platform makes the solutions accessible to a global community. Take Nia, for example. She works for a small NGO, running a project to better involve communities in water management. Documenting her experience as a panorama solution allows Nia to reflect and better understand what worked and why. The exposure on Panorama gives visibility and recognition to her fantastic work beyond the local context in which it was applied. We need to ignore national boundaries and make sure that knowledge of what works and why it works is shared everywhere around the world. Namid Bolin, he's an advisor to the Minister of Environment in his country. For him, the panorama is a useful source of information because it allows him to better understand trends in conservation and development. The solutions provide him with real-life examples to underpin policy recommendations. We talk about the problems, we complain about the challenges, but there are solutions around the world and we need to share those solutions a lot more proactively so that we can start to talk positively in conservation. Sharing my, my solution here has been one of the, of the best things that I could do. Only if we learn from each other's success can we achieve better decision-making and greater impact for conservation and development. Let's focus on what works. Contribute now. <laughs>